if you're watching this video, I'm sure you have a copy of Shana Tooth's third edition video. My team for this edition is Africa. I'm the editor of Shana Tooth's magazine and I'm glad to have you here. And thank you for your support. It really means a lot. This time around, we decided to focus on Africa because I discovered that a lot of us don't know certain things about Africa. In fact, Africa is considered as a country and not a continent. So we decided to draw some myths about Africa um, by talking to some people who are quite knowledgeable about Africa from Lala Akindudi to Zubero Duwali. Also, we talked about key issues as regards um, Africa. We talked about racism and xenophobia, as we all know that happened in South Africa. We talked about culture shock. We talked about a lot of things. Afro, we talked about a lot of things. And then we get to learn things from this magazine. We just didn't want you to go through Shalom Truth magazine and just you not know, get any from it. We wanted you to get content and which is what we're here for a 360 degree in the mid round. And beyond that, we also focus on our fashion this time around. We made it pop. I'm sure you're going to love it. The theme of the shoot was vintage Africa, so we took a lot of time. It was quite challenging, but we decided to bring the best story as regards fashion and fashion in Africa. Sit back, relax, it's going to be very interesting. Beyond that, we have prizes for you in this edition. Just try to be a part of it. You get to win something just by being involved and just by telling your friends to tell your friends about Shadow Truth Magazine. I look forward to having this chat with you again when you purchase the fourth edition of Shadow Truth Magazine. Until then, stay blessed. My name is Mercy Moise and the editor in chief Shadow Truth Magazine. One more thing, I'm leaving a word with you. Um, you can achieve anything. When I started this third edition, it looked quite challenging, but in the end, I was able to pull through, as I'm sure you'll be able to pull through anything. And should I shock you a bit, I studied civil engineering in school, but here I am writing and trying to impact the world. So find something that is what to do. Find uh, and be a solution to something, be a solution provider. Start something, start something in your area, start something where you know there's an area of need, and I'm sure you'll be the best. Be the best and be the best. Thank you very much. Some people say if you want to send a message, you go to the post office. Yeah, that's true. Like, don't, don't preach with the, you know, there, there's that school of thought. Okay. And I also know that it's only in Nigeria that people are very, like, what's the moral of the Without sounding funny, sometimes there doesn't have to be a moral. Because storytelling is real life. The reason why something like love always says is because everybody experiences love in real life and everybody can identify with it. People will watch something they can relate with. When people see themselves or they see their uncle or they see believable characters, they will watch it because they understand that you are telling a story they can identify. So even if it's not them, they know somebody that has gone through it or they, you know, they have a family member that has gone through it. Love will always be because if you don't, if you are not in love romantically, you're in love with your father, your mother, you love somebody, somebody loves you. Love is constant. Or you love God. Oh, God loves us. As in, so even if there's, you, you say you don't love anybody, there's the love of God. So love will always sell. And when I say this thing about everything doesn't have to have a moral, it's, it's such a challenge for writers because sometimes your day, in your day, is it every day that there's a moral of how your day went? No. No. Sometimes you get home, you win some, you lose some. And that's real. And that's what stories should be, in my opinion. Now, this is not to say that certain experiences don't bring lessons, right? Now, the society generally, yes, there is a, there is a depreciation in values and all of that, which is general. Now, is, is it the responsibility of Nollywood to, or actors to restore? Yes and no, because there's art for art's sake. There's art for social causes. They're, you know, so they're, they're, they're materials, and from the beginning of any work of art, you must know the end. I like to say the left commandment, know thyself is not a first. If you know yourself, so this script I'm writing, what do I want to achieve with it? I want, I want young people to 
I want people to redefine what success is because I, I think there's a success problem in, in the society now. We just think make money faster. And just so I, I want this story to change the mindset of this make money fast. I want to, you know, inspire values on hard work and things. From we know that's what we want to achieve. And that's the kind of story we will create. And that's what we will do. It doesn't even mean somebody also writes a story about a girl who is not necessary. It doesn't even make that story any less valid because it's not more round. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, it's uh, hence me saying I'm passionate about telling the African story to write because there's more to us now. There's more to us than all the things that Nollywood films of a certain time projected. Because those films are still there. The films where there's only Juju and all that. But there are better stories now. In the last five to seven years, there are stories that show us, you know, the right way. The thing is, the honor still rests on us to push stories that project us properly. That show that Nigeria is not just about Juju and all of that. But I think right now, that impression is changing. Because more of our films are made on international standards yeah, technically. and are being, are being pushed through the right channels. The only problem is, many of those people, the, the films that project the juju and all these negative things are cheap, they are made by pirates, they are made by the marketers, and they are easily circulated and they are easy to see. Assess. So they will see those films before they see a Kolea for Lion film, before they see a Tunde Kelani film. And Tunde Kelani has been making films for over 20 years. And these films have projected us very well. But those people will never see that film because it's not, it's not available like pure water, for lack of a better word. But that's also, that brings us back to things like the structure, distribution, the economics of the industry, how the filmmaker makes money and all of that. It is, I mean, that's why what we call Nollywood, in inverted commas, which started in 1992 with the marketers, was well, dominated by stories that had a lot of jazz, voodoo, juju, dance snakes, this, and those things were selling. So the people did not even stop. We must remember that people are also business people. And they did it for money. Writing for cash. They did it for money. Not even, they were not even writing. You're the one thinking of writing because you are, you, are, you are an academic. They don't care about writing. Shoot me, shoot me, shoot me, go. That's their own. Mm. Tell the story. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Even now, the guys, and what they, the turnover they make is a lot. So there is nothing you're going to tell them that will make them stop. So what we who feel strongly about it have to do is we we have to push the stories that we want the world to see. We are the ones. We cannot we do it. And you cannot show them that because art is also relative. And I don't think there's any right or wrong in art. So we are the ones that have to see to it that no. If I'm going to make a film, if I'm going to, I will make sure that certain things are projected right. Africa is not about hungry children and children with big stomachs, you know, all those funny things. We'll project ourselves and tell authentic stories, even though that juju is still some people's reality. Let's not take, there's some places you will go to. It is their reality. As pretty as Lagos looks and everything, some people still sleep. In a and if I if I decide to make a film there, somebody will say now that I'm not representing Lagos properly. Mm. But it is somebody's reality. And for me, filmmaking, art, acting, it's about telling the real different reality, which is why I love my job. I'm able to experience different people's realities God, my syllabus is the Bible. I teach about God, His Christ, the salvation, and now we are teaching. Okay, sir. Can you tell us more about CCI and how you receive the vision? Okay, Celebration, Celebration Church um, started as a fellowship named Calvary Church Fellowship um, that started when I was a student. We began to have meetings outside school because uh, I was just a student that loved the Lord and was eager to know the Lord. And even if I didn't know so much, some people felt I had some things to teach them and so people kept coming around, I was teaching and the fellowship began to grow. I think we had a fellowship strength of about 1,000, you know, even as an undergraduate, you know, so, and it got to a time, it was our parents that um, 
what we had wasn't supposed to stop in school but God had given us a real vision with and ship to follow so we started I started one year after graduation and we've been growing ever since we'll be we'll be entering our third year in November we have two equally growing branches and um, so that's that's that for the history of celebration too. okay so is there anything spectacular that um, you could share with us concerning how you received the vision. Was there a loud voice? Was there? <laughs> Actually, you know, in, that's another interesting thing. In the, in the Bible, the prerequisite for calling is that you are able to teach. You are not a novice and that you are faithful. Uh, Paul said the same thing you have learned of us, committed to faithful men who are able to teach. I think that's first Timothy 2 to you know, faithful men who are able to teach the requirement for a pastor, first Timothy 3, you know, if you meet all those requirements, you, um, you are not a novice, you have a good report amongst the hearing, and you, I also believe that you must have had some formal or informal ministerial training in doctrine. Of course, you must be, the Bible says you must be apt to teach all those titles you he must be apt to teach and if anyone desires the post of bishop so um god had committed people that i was supposed to be responsible for spiritually i felt i had grown to a point i was capable enough to do it and even though i had encounters of course god told us what venue to use what date to start and all but that's not what our um, ministry is hanging on our ministry is hanging on the word of god my name is Oluja Boturio, where I blog at livepeople.com. I'd like to talk about Shalom Truth Magazine. We have quite a number of uh, magazines and publications out there that you can really vouch for the content. But if you're looking for a Christian magazine that you can recommend the content to any other person, to anybody out there, if you're looking for a magazine, a Christian magazine with articles that put across every facet of life, every aspect of life, then definitely I recommend Shalom Truth Magazine. You see content that from relationship to career to fashion to business to health to nutrition shalom to magazine provide that content that you can depend on i'm jada ida moses talking about esteem shalom troops magazine i've been privileged to read the first second and the third edition that is about to be unveiled it's one that gives you a handful of information about things you need to know about the totality of human life. So I recommend everyone to get this one.